Hey everyone, I am Luna Willows. I am Jana Pierce. Be glad to welcome you to our podcast, The Flow of Ink. The Flow of Ink. Which is a great place where we take our writing life day by day and our stories page by page. So why don't you sit back, relax, and stay for a bit while we have a chat. Okay, and before we dive too deep into this evening's show, we'd like to take a few moments to share with you the layout of all our future episodes. At the beginning of each show, we'll provide an opportunity to answer any questions that you and other listeners may have from the previous episode. Your questions can range from anything related to writing, the episode in which you comment on, or even if you have a question about us. So if there's any writing-related topics that you'd like to see us discuss in future episodes, we would love to hear what you have to say. All you have to do is drop a comment on the episode, and we promise to address your questions at the beginning of the next episode. After we've gone through the Q&A portion of our episodes, we will then give you some brief bullet points on what to, on what to expect throughout the hour. And from there, we'll take a deep dive into the topics of each show, which may range from our favorite books with reviews to reading our poetry and sneak peeks of our own novels, which I'm excited for, as well as doing interviews with guest authors and their latest books along with providing fellow writers some tips for writing and staying motivated in order to keep their flow of ink going. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, today's debut episode will give you an idea of who we are and why we're here. Which means that for today's episode, Jenna and I will be asking each other a series of questions to help you get to know us better. And we'll start with you, Luna. Oh, sure. Put me in the spot first. I see how it is. All right. And uh, so the first question that we have for today is, who are you and where are you from? I am from a large part of Minnesota. I am 25 years old. I'm an aspiring writer. I love to write young adult fiction in the genres of romance and fantasy. Uh, I also have a rare neurological disease called Charcot-Marie-Tooth, and I have type 1A. Uh, What Charcot-Marie-Tooth is, is it is a peripheral neurological disease. It affects the arms, legs, and hands, all of your extremities, and it weakens them. It's a lot like muscular dystrophy. Uh, It is also very painful, and it makes me fall a lot, unfortunately, because where your nerves are, there is, I like to think of it as an electrical cord. You know how you have the wires in the middle and the rubber outside protecting it. Mm -hmm. Your, Your nerves have myelon that protects your nerves. Well, some spots, I don't have that, so it's like raw wire sticking out. And so when my brain sends a message to my arm to move or for my leg to move, uh, it doesn't always get there. It goes like straight up through my skin and it's very painful. So that causes me to fall a lot. And yeah, that's me. Uh, Jenna, what, what would you like to say? Uh, first, I would like to say uh, that uh, I'm very, very excited to hear that you have CMT. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, September is also the month of um, uh, CMT awareness, so that's a good thing to know. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, there are over 2.8 million people around the globe who also have this disease, and there's presently no known cure for it. It's it's a very hard thing to deal with, but I get through with the people in my life. That's good. And, of course, I'm always here for you, too. So. Yes. All right. So, um, well, uh, I'm Jenna Pierce. I am 33 years old. I was born in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but I grew up in and around the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania. 
I am a published author who writes in the fictional genres of Christian romance, romance suspense, young adult, and I do have a uh, soon-to-be-coming uh, ten-book crime fantasy thriller series. Uh, the first book um, might be coming out towards the end of uh, 2022, might be early 2022, so uh, 2023, excuse me. So it's going to be a little bit, but I'm so excited to bring that to you. But uh, um, what I do presently have on the market for you is uh, Broken and a sister novel, uh, the sequel, Dawn of Darkness. Both are part of a four-book series called Broken. Um, I am working on the third third one, which is called Nightmare in the Mirror. Um, so we can expect that one to be out, I'd say, definitely before uh, around the end of 2022, fall, maybe um, maybe winter. So um, keep up. Give you guys uh, an update on that on my actual website. Um, in the meantime, if you are interested in checking out any of my works that I do have online for free to get a sense of uh, what my writing style is like and if it's for you, I do have two works in progress that are online 100% free and they will always remain free even when they are completed. Um, the first one is called Race in the Crown, which I actually have plans to translate into Italian directly by me and a good friend of mine who's also fluent in the language. I'm also going to write a dual uh, English-Italian version for the Italian language students, and all versions will be 100% free. And then, of course, the other work in progress that I have available online for free is called My World. Um, both of them fall in the fictional categories of uh, young adult with some romance thrown in there. And um, Raising the Crown has a touch of fantasy. Um, I do recommend anyone and everyone to go ahead and check them out. Uh, I can say that I do have I do have a favorite of writing Raising the Crown uh, mm-hmm. just because... Um, the main character is just like one of my favorite characters that I've ever written and uh, so I put a lot of emotional investment into him and all that but um, that's pretty much all I have to say for who I am and what kind of work I do I will say as someone who has read uh, Broken and Dawn of Darkness I love them I cannot wait until the third one comes out because I will be the first one to get a copy I, I got immersed into the world from the second I owned the first book. I'm so excited to hear that a third will be coming somewhat soon. <laughs> Absolutely. So, the next question would be, I'm letting you answer first this time, of course. Outside of writing, what are your hobbies and interests? Well, that's a good question. Um, pre-pandemic, I would do a lot of girls' nights out. Uh, with country line dancing, and I love traveling and trying new things. I haven't been doing as much uh, traveling or trying new things uh, since the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. I've mostly been uh, staying home and all that because um, the people that I love, uh, like my grandma and my, the love of my life, they have underlying conditions um, that make it hard for them to... You, like, let's just put it this way, the pandemic with, with the COVID-19, um, if they were to catch uh, COVID, it would probably take them out because of their yep. underlying conditions. So out of respect to them, I just, you know. Stay home. Stay safe. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, as for what I'm doing presently, aside from, um, well, I'm just on the very end of recovering from a broken wrist. Um, but I do like the occasional, uh, glass of wine with some instrumentals like Daniel Jang, uh, James Galway, Kenny G, and, of course, you may have, uh, heard me mention, uh, Italian earlier, so mm-hmm. I am studying Italiano, uh, the language and the culture, I'm, I'm in love with it, like, I, mm-hmm. I just, like, anything Italian, whether it's fashion or food or, you know, just the whole thing, like, I just love it. Oh, yeah. And, then, of course... I'm also studying uh, Portuguese as well. Um, I would love to be able to, at some point, spend 
six months in Brazil and then also six months in Portugal. So I'm going to um, hide in your luggage when that happens. <laughs> right, right. So um, I'm also an advocate for cystic fibrosis because the love of my life, my boyfriend, he has a very, very aggressive mutation. Uh, the most aggressive one, in fact. And uh, it's, it's a really uh, difficult disease for someone who has cystic fibrosis. Um, so I'm an advocate for those people, like my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I'm also an advocate for childhood cancer awareness because um, <clears throat> I lost my youngest baby brother to uh, neuroblastoma, which is a cancer of the adrenal gland. Okay. So, one of the seven most common cancers in children, and uh, if if somebody if if a child who ends up going into remission and then they 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 um when when they uh, when it comes back, yeah. uh, oftentimes it, it just kills them because there's no cure for it. There's no yeah. cure for it. No. So. Well, I'm sorry okay. you had to go through that. That is very hard, especially at such a young age. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do know that I have read these posts that she is posting on Facebook and Instagram. She takes a lot of care to just every post and getting information out there to raise awareness of symptoms. And it is just it's very beautiful. I will continue to share them daily. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yes. And uh, so how about you? What do you enjoy besides writing? Hmm. Well, cuddling with my wonderful fat cat, Cheesy, would have to be the first. She goes with me everywhere. She is never far from me. She is beyond emotional support. She is my baby. <laughs> um, awesome. Because I can't do a lot of physical activities, I try to find stuff that I can do just, just sitting and just like being in my own home. So luckily, as far as the pandemic goes, like I haven't been too affected as far as that goes. Um, but I do a lot of painting. Uh, I'm working on getting like oil paints, but I've been stuck with mainly acrylic for now. I love doing embroidery. Uh, baking. I love these little paint by sticker books. I'm obsessed with them. I think I have like every one that's out right now. Nice. I like to binge watch movies and television shows like There's No Tomorrow and playing games like Scrabble or certain console games like Sims, which actually helps me create my characters because I nice. can bring them to life. Cool. And uh, that would be about it. Like, I think that weirdly, my introverted side has loved the pandemic because when I'm like too done with people, I can be like, okay, yeah, I need to like go home. I need my space. I can, I can do that. Whereas, like, one of my dearest friends is majorly a people person. She loves being around people and everything. And it's hit her pretty hard because she can't do that. Me, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people who is like in between. Like I have my moments where I can be like extremely social and mm -hmm. happy and like affectionate, like give me some hugs kind of thing. Yep. And then I have my moments where I'm just like, go away, just, go. just yeah. leave me alone. I don't, don't text me, don't, don't mm -hmm. call me. Just leave me alone and let me listen to my music and whatever. You know, and, so, yep. do your own um, thing. Yeah. Yep. So, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, all right. So, moving on to the next question. When did you know that you wanted to be a writer? Okay. So, I would have to say around 8th or ninth grade, I began carrying around composition notebooks. So, you can get, like, anywhere for 89 cents. I love them. And I would keep them in my backpack, in my wheelchair, and during each class, I would pull them out, like I had science reading, like art, and so it looked like I was taking notes, because it was for that class, but I'd be writing different stories, and 
there's a lot of bullying in like each school that I went to so it became so easy to just focus on writing creating a world creating characters and they began to feel more like family or friends to me than like anyone else because they understood me and like not having a lot of friends like I just didn't have that with people so I had that with my stories I think that's when I knew like hey I want to do this this is <laughs> this is what I love um yeah for all you people who are listening to this um did you know that according to psychology today many famous fiction authors report interacting with their characters as though the imaginary people they write about have minds of their own mm-hmm. for some authors their characters even have very distinct voice patterns and tones a survey of information collected from 181 authors at Durham University shows that a whopping 61% of writers feel their characters have full agency and can behave differently than the author wants them to. Oh yeah, they have minds of their own. We can't control that. <laughs> right, right. So I used to think that I was like the only one that was crazy and yeah. no. I guess we're not crazy after all. <laughs> no, we, well, if... If that's the case, we're both crazy. What are we doing here? <laughs> right. right. Well, um, on, on another note, I do want to say that bullying is not cool. No, that is not. It just, it, it doesn't help the bully or the person who's being bullied. It can lead to trauma later in life. So if you've been being mean, hug a person. Well, with their, with their authority. You hug them and you don't do that no more. <laughs> right. Exactly. So when did you know? Like, when was your aha moment? Like, you wanted to do this? Well, I've always had an active imagination, though I did not officially start getting into, like, writing until I did, like, an eighth grade um, English project that I had to do. I We... Had a, we had the assignment of having somebody work with us, and it was to write a short story. And my short story with my classmate, it was kind of cool. It was like, it was like a, a haunting like mm-hmm. like story. I actually still have a copy of it. Believe it or Ooh. not, I have it. I have it in a bin right underneath my bed. Like, and it's just like I pulled it out one day. I'm like, you know, just going through my old notebooks of writing, and I'm mm-hmm. like, wow. <laughs> I still have it. Of course, yeah. it's not something that I'm actually gonna um, like. Sometimes I do like I do have one short story online. So occasionally I like to do a short story, and I do intend on publishing more. But this short story I won't be able to publish because, well, it was written with somebody else. Exactly. So. Yeah. And oh well, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but that was my first taste of. You know, getting into the writing world outside of little bits of poetry from mm-hmm. like the sixth grade on up. Yep. Uh, never really seemed any of any interest to me until, see, uh, between the seventh and the ninth grades, I was like on uh, a dream, uh, a Greg Raposo message form. And Greg Raposo is a, a former member of the Dream Street Band. Um, so that's kind of. Uh, where I started writing is uh, on Greg Raposo's message forum with a whole bunch of other fan fiction writers. First, mm-hmm. uh, the first couple of years that I was on that website, it was like I would read everything that the writers on the forum, you know, would write as far mm-hmm. as fan fiction, is, fan fiction is concerned of all, you know, five members of the Dream, Dream Street band. And then it got to a point where I literally read, like, pretty much everything that was on there. I'm like, oh yeah. And here I am, sitting, waiting, because a lot of them, you know, they were teenagers too, yeah. so they had chores, homework, school, that kind of thing. So, here I am, just sitting, waiting, you know, week by week. I'm like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of waiting. I'm going to go ahead and write my own. And I kind of where it went from there. Um, I did write a real novel uh, for my senior high school graduation project, um, which was a requirement in the state of Pennsylvania at the time Mm -hmm. for their senior graduation project. And um, 
But I didn't officially get out of the whole fan fiction phase until I hit my 20s. Mm-hmm. So at that time, it was a couple other different, you know, like actors here or there, whatever, you know. Um, and then what happened is I moved out to San Diego, California. I was trying to pursue the acting and modeling careers, but then I realized that that wasn't really me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially the whole modeling thing, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, you know, doing an acting, but modeling just, it was not for me, and, and and then, you know, like, I just started writing more and more, and I'm like, you know what, this is what I really want to do. Yeah. So, so really, in my 20s, my aha moment is, uh, that that's where I came from, so, yeah. that's when I started taking my writing more seriously, and then, I'd look at my characters, they, they would jump out at the screen, and, you know, maybe, like, demanding more authenticity from me. I'm like, okay, okay, so I'll do this. So I revamped a couple of things, a couple of stories, and then like, today, now it's all fresh stories. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's, that's pretty much. So what you're saying is, is you're 20 when you started going crazy. Okay, good thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, good to know that now. <laughs> right? Um, I do know that, like, a lot of writers become big from fan fiction, and there's, like, this another page that's, like, fan fiction now, it's, like, archive of our own or something. I have a friend who still reads and writes on there, and, I mean, I started on there, too. I wrote a lot of things, and unfortunately can't find them, I have no idea what my name was, but I think a lot of people start there because it's such an open and accept- accepting page and forum, that it's easy for people to start out there. Right. Exactly. It's easy to start out with writing like that. Um, and then just going off of like into like a fantasy with your characters yep. and stuff. But then when you become a, a serious, um, when you, when you want to take it serious and you want to become published and stuff, then I think naturally they, they come up with their own characters, yep. their, own, their own authentic personalities and all the like. Oh yeah. So, I guess we shall move on. What writers inspired you when you first started out writing? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Uh, initially, other Dream Street fan fiction writers. <laughs> yes. Um, simply because if I if it wasn't for them, I don't think that I would be a writer today. Oh, wow. If that makes okay. any sense. Yep. So they, they inspired me to start writing and getting into it. But then as I became more serious and became published, I started getting inspired by authors like Mary Higgins Clark and John Grisham and Stephen King. Oh, yeah. He's a great one. He scares me a little bit. Mm-hmm. No, he's, he's inspiring nonetheless. Oh, yes. I would have to say that every writer, at least it writes thriller and horror genres, there's there's that madness within. Like, there, there's there got to be a little bit there, otherwise it's just not going to be as good. Right, right. All right, so what about you? I, uh, along with the madness within, going from there, I'd have to say Edgar Allan Poe, Stephen King, Shakespeare. Like, they were my number one I think I was reading them during ages that the average child should not be reading them (laughs) an average (laughs) child should not be seeing the things that I saw at that age (laughs) but I loved it like just it was so deep like it was nothing like the boxcar children like that's what everyone was reading no bring me Shakespeare like give me Edgar Allan Poe give me Stephen King I want that uh, I just like reading is like my all-time passion and I think I got that from my grandma who unfortunately passed away almost a year ago she owned all of the Stephen King books like up until the time she passed and like every Christmas that's what she got as a present was like the newest Stephen King book and I think that my fiance and I are going to carry that on just to just to keep her with me. Like, I want to keep that tradition going. 
even though she's not here. She's here in my bookshelf. <laughs> um, I yeah, it's okay. I I still cry. I still break down. It's nothing that's easy. You don't just like you know wake up one day and you're fine. It's it's a deep thing. I still pick up the phone to call her. It's been almost a year, and I'm like, I gotta tell my grandma this. Like, I gotta tell her. And so, instead of just calling her, I just speak to her. And I just say, hey, you know, how you doing? So, I am crazy. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, you're not crazy, but grief is uh, not the same for, uh, for... It's different for everybody. It, it really is. Um, and I think that she is the reason that I loved writing so much. The reason that, like bookstores feel more like home to me than my actual place of living like I walk in and I just get this warm sensation of oh, it's home especially if there's coffee there and I smell that the best scent in the world is books mixed with coffee I love it if if that was a perfume I would wear it every day <laughs> you know what I would too I would totally do that and um I'm with you on the whole thing about bookstores like I could, like, I have literally spent hours and mm -hmm. hours and hours in a store in Barnes & Nobles in oh, San Diego. open the clothes. <laughs> open the clothes. Yes. Yeah, like, like, if you, like, like I could live there. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. Like, I planned it amazing. one day. Right? I walked in, like, I, I waited outside the doors for it to open, walked in, went to the back where they have, like, the, the recliners that you can sit at and read. And I sat here and I was like, okay, I looked up and I was like, you know, we could add stairs right here. We could add just a whole apartment right here. There, There's a coffee shop. I could live off that. <laughs> I don't need anything else. This is my home now. You don't think they'll mind, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like, I could be there from open to close, too. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, moving on. If you were to write a spin-off about a side character, any side character from any book you've ever read, which would you pick and why? So, bringing up Broken, your series, I would choose, without giving away too many spoilers, I would choose either Azen or Amari. I hope I'm saying them right. That's how I've been pronouncing it in my head. Yes. But yes. if I had to choose just one, it would be Azen. Like, I feel so connected to that character. He is my favorite. And I would want to write a spinoff of, like, him creating his own happily ever after. And I'd probably, like, put myself in his life. Not as a significant other, but as a best friend. And I'd be like, okay, like, you're getting your happy ending now. Like, as far as from <laughs> what I've read, that is what I would want. A hundred percent. Like, Azen, oh. just my heart yes <laughs> yeah yeah when I was uh, writing up his personality and stuff it's just I, I did feel you know uh, I'm emotionally close to him too so I get why you would pick him yeah it's just like it's easy I love all the main characters like Sam Colby like my heart too but there's something about him that just makes you want to like hug him and protect him from everything <laughs> Aww. But what about you? Who would you choose? No, that's a good question. I would choose Daniel Denner from a book coming up of mine called Finding Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, basically, see, he is not, like, a main character, but mm -hmm. he is a very important character to one of the main characters. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to spoil the audience but yes. uh, Daniel Denner is one of the characters in all the characters that I've ever written I have written so much about him like mm -hmm. his past and his present and his future like like I feel like he should have his own story but at the same yeah. time it kind of takes away from the whole Finding Dakota yeah. uh, and its actual sequel. Mm -hmm. And that's really all that's going to be, is Finding Dakota and Finding Sanctuary. That's it. But really? Daniel Denner deserves, in my opinion, some recognition because he is the one character that undergoes so much mm -hmm. transformation. Like, And um, for anybody who's listening to this, 
uh, Luna has actually been reading it, and she's been yes. helping me with uh, con- uh, con- uh, constructive criticism mm-hmm. and helping me along with it. And I think she's going to agree with me that Daniel, he just has gone through so much transformation in yes. the first book alone. Like, he starts know, out... Yeah. Right? He starts out as a 23-year-old um, miscreant who, um, who basically uh, gets arrested for defacing his high school's property while leading to the delinquency of a minor. So he's kind of a little, uh, kind of a little badass, excuse mm-hmm. my language, mm-hmm. but... Yes. Um, there's really no other way to say no, it. He's just, no. a little, he's just a little troublemaker, yep. and he's just shady. He's a little bit of a, a drug dealer. He's just, he is just. He steals he, your heart, though, truthfully. Like, you see beyond all the bad, like, just from what I've read. You see beyond all the bad, and you see something deeper within, and he just steals your heart. Like, it just you love him and you're just wanting to see him get better and do better right yeah he is such a very complex character with so many layers to him like you think in the beginning of the book that he is just like you're like I- i'm not gonna like this character am yeah. i and that's what you're thinking you're thinking oh you know what he's just gotta be a total waste of space why write mm-hmm. about him but mm-hmm. then you learn throughout the book as you're reading Mm -hmm. that there is a deeper more sensitive side to him and then you'll see why he does the things he does or Mm -hmm. doesn't do the things that he should do and then you just like I love him like I really do and you know it's just I wish he was real (laughs) like you love him that much like please just like run from the page of my book and become real (laughs) <laughs> like transform like that um i don't know if you've ever seen it but that video from like forever ago it was like aha uh what the heck is it called like there's a video where she like falls into this comic story and like falls in love with the guy and like she gets knocked out but then he like fights his way back to her i don't remember the song but that video is amazing and that's what I want Daniel to do, <laughs> literally. Right, right. Um, part of the reason why he undergoes so much transf- transformation is because of the main character, Dakota. Dakota, yep. So, yep. You and see then, that. Of course, you'll see it. I'm not going to spoil it. So no. I'm really, really, really excited. I am almost done with the manuscript, and I'm so excited to get that out. So I had intended on getting it published, um, released, um, by the end of summer, but because of my wrist injury, mm-hmm. it kind of, uh, where I actually broke my wrist and underwent surgery, and now I'm in recovery, so it kind of, I've kind of had to put a temporary halt on, mm-hmm. on uh, writing anything of my manuscript, so, so I apologize for anybody who's who's been waiting for Collide and anything else in my work, I'm so sorry, um, but I do have to take care of my wrist first and make sure it's all good to go before I officially throw myself back into writing. So, um, so yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Like, you need to send me some more chapters. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will definitely do, do so. But moving on, unfortunately, from Daniel, we don't want to. Do you get writer's block? And if so, how do, how do you deal with that? Like, what do you do? Well, I'm always working on at least two to three manuscripts at a time. Mm-hmm. So when I get writer's block on one, I'll just take a break from it, and then I'll move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, when working on one of the other manuscripts I don't that I don't have writer's block on, I will actually get inspired with a new scene or an idea for the manuscript that I am stuck on, and then I'll just continue with it where I left off. That makes sense. If I... It, it might take a few days or so um, to do that. And uh, if I don't feel like waiting for a few days for some inspiration to come from one of my other manuscripts, then right before bed, I will just reread the manuscript that I'm stuck on. I will even go so far as to listen to some music while um, while the scene that I'm, that I'm stuck on plays in my head on repeat. Yeah. That's a good way music can help inspire and make things flow. 
Right? Absolutely. So what about you? I don't often get writer's block. I feel like I even dream about things I'm writing. Uh, I, I like you. I work on like I work on at least two at once. I have one story that I'm working on as uh, an angel fantasy series. And mm-hmm. I, I dream about it. Like I will wake up and, and type it down because I'm like, I don't want to forget that for later. And I find myself so sucked into one story that I'll forget about another until I start dreaming about that one, too. Right? Oh, my gosh. That is me, too. (sighs) Totally. 100%. Like, it's just you become so, like, I don't want to say you become the character because that's not it at all. But the character speaks to you from within this depth of yourself. And it's just like, this is what I want you to put down. This is my story. And you just have to get it out. But I think that for the cases, I do get it. Like, after my grandma passed, I didn't write for, like, six months at least. I started doing writing prompts. Like, you and I did a couple together. um, And just coming up with stories that, you know, you wouldn't really think of. Like, the books help a lot with, like making you do things you may not necessarily be comfortable with and I think that often makes like a better writer out of you because it's just not what you would normally do and you can find like that's how I found that I liked writing fantasy is that I started a writing prompt that was very like set in 2050 and I was just like oh like this is fun I could do this I remember that one. Yeah, like, I think it was like a, a diary well. entry or something from like 2050. Yeah, that was, that was like one of the best ones. Like, I love it. Like, one of my favorite ones that I've read. Like, really awesome. You totally need to make that a real, like, manuscript and a real book. I say go for it. I approve. <laughs> thank you. Uh, your approval means a lot to me. So, thank <laughs> you. Um,. I do also, another thing I do is if I'm working on, like, really emotional things, I'll watch or listen to music that fit that genre. Like, I'll listen to really sad music that literally brings me to tears to get me into that state that I need to be for that scene. Or Mm -hmm. I'll turn on something, like, really happy. Like, I mean, not to give any spoilers, but if you haven't seen a lot of Walking Dead, don't listen to me, but Glenn's death scene, I turn on to get emotional because that scene's, like, ripped out my heart. And it helped me get through some emotional scenes. So, thank you, Walking Dead. (laughs) All right, so moving on to the next question. Do you prefer writing in silence or to music? So, as I said a little bit, I it depends on the project I'm working on or depends on the scene that I'm working on. If it is really emotional, yes, I will listen to things like classical, classical piano, um, like Bach, uh, cello. Uh, My Chemical Romance has some pretty like soul-touching music. I turn that on and, like, crank it up in my ears and just stay in that, like, sit in it. Let it surround me and just write. If I'm writing, like, intense things, then I don't like any music or TV or anything in the background. It has to be quiet because I like to feel, I like to put myself in a state of tension. And I don't like silence. So if I turn everything off, I'm tense. And I I can write that. And then mm. for happy stuff, I listen to uh, like happy scenes, pop music. Like what you would expect your character to listen to. Or like Panic at the Disco. It has a lot of like poppy stuff. Uh, and so that's what I do. Like it all depends on the scene or the genre or like everything. Nice, nice. What what do you think? Like, do you prefer silence or do you prefer music? Well, like you, it depends on the project that I'm working on as well as the scene that I'm writing about. Um, music even changes from time to time for me. One song may work 
for one scene in one mm-hmm. manuscript, but it may never work for anything else I write. I don't know why. And then not only that, but I will keep replaying that same song. Like, I will just play it on mm-hmm. Spotify on repeat until I am finished with the scene. Sometimes mm-hmm. I just hitting it like you, and then sometimes I just write it all up. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I also recently read online that some actors and authors actually use playlists to help them get into the roles that they play or audition for, or in the case of authors, help them to create the characters that they want to, you know, create for their manuscripts. So I've actually recently started trying that out, and it's a pretty nifty trick to get into the right mood for the right scene. Yeah. I think that that's that's good. It's funny that we like have a lot of the same like things, like we have a lot of the same processes. Right. I wonder if it's I wonder if it's like the way for like every author or not. Like, I guess we'll find out in future episodes. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) When we have our fellow guest authors. Yeah. So. Moving on to the next question. What is a book that you can read over and over and why? Ooh, my favorite book that I love to read and I've read it a couple times is The Shack by William P. Young. It's a tragic but beautiful story. And it, I love the fact that it shows a perfect visual representation of the relationship between the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. That is in the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. It's a, the story is basically a question about faith, while the main character struggles through his grief over the loss of his child. Mm-hmm. And it just I cannot get through that book without crying. No, you can't. You, I mean, not to be mean, but you'd have to be soulless. I, I have read it multiple times. Any time that I'm going through something faith-altering, uh, I like to read it, and I feel like I get kind of my answer each and every time from reading it. You find a different thing to learn from it with every reading. It's a very well-written book. See, that's amazing. I love that about books. It's healing. All right, so, <laughs> right? Right? So, what about you? What's a book that you can read over and over again, and why? So, I'm going to be the cliche person here. Um, and say that Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is Mm -hmm. my number one. I would say the whole series if that were an option, but it's just one book. Uh, The the Prisoner of Azkaban is my all-time favorite book and, and movie in the series. And I just love Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling did so much more than create a simple like serious create a simple story she created a world that almost anyone who has read or seen it like wants to be in i i was captivated from the very first time that i picked up those books i mean just hands down it would have to be that one did you i mean did you have a similar thing with harry potter where you just enamored by it when you read it absolutely harry potter like just the world that she created Mm -hmm. to me when you have these authors out there like like jk rowling and um rr tolkien um it's just like the world that they create it's like so beautiful majestic and it's like and you know for the for the whole um for the whole ha- wizarding world of Harry Potter, it's like so amazing. Like, I actually went down to uh, Florida and got to oh. check out that little uh, wizarding world there, and I mm-hmm. had the real deal of butter beer. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is like my favorite drink, like ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, yes. that's what it'll bring my heart right there. It's mm-hmm. give me some real true blue butter beer. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. You got me. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. Um, But the one thing that I kind of wish was real of the whole Wizarding World of Harry Potter is Quidditch. Like, who doesn't wish that that was a real sport? I I would go. I actually, for my birthday, like, I had a Harry Potter-themed birthday. I had a Gryffindor cake. 
I got a artifact box from a friend of mine, and it has a, like, I kind of want to call it, you know, you put on the back of, like, your trunk that says, like, Army Family or, like, bumper stickers. I have a Quidditch bumper sticker. Nice. And I love it. Like, I will never take it off. I'm keeping it, like, as is, and it's amazing. It is, like, I would be their front row every time cheering my team on quidditch is amazing i'd love to fly a broomstick like let's hop on the hogwarts express i have the marauders map like let's go to hogwarts and tour let's do it <laughs> absolutely as soon as i can get my letter from hogwarts and uh instruction on how to get onto platform nine and three quarters <laughs> and i'm there yes we'll, we'll have to We'll have to call whoever's in charge and be like, hey, you know, her letter was due many years ago. Let's get it going. <laughs> right. All right. So moving on, what is your favorite quote? Uh, it's, it's difficult. I have a lot. But one that spoke to me just like in my heart, not just like a cute little Instagram quote, just something that spoke to me as a person was a quote from Khalil Gibran. Uh, he said, Out of suffering have emerged the strongest souls. The most massive characters are seared with scars. And I think, yeah, as a writer, we, as writers, we can say that, like, some of our best characters, some of, like, the most significant characters in our mind and in our hearts have gone through the most, have endured the most crap. And mm -hmm. it, it just spoke to me. Because not only is a person who's gone through a lot of challenges in her life, but someone who has people in her head who have gone through so much, it's just, it's a lot. Yeah, that, 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 is, such a, that is such a deep and powerful quote. Like, oh my goodness. It's it's beautiful. Like I'd almost get that tattooed, honestly. It's just really? yeah. Cool. So what what is yours? I'm dying to hear. What is Jenna's favorite quote? Um. Well, mine may seem a little uh, hopeless, romantic type, but <laughs> really, it's more. Um. I'm about real. I'm someone who's about real love. And in my, my definition of a real love is what is aligned in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, it comes from the first book of Corinthians, uh, chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. And this is how it goes. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, and always hopes, always perseveres. Amen. Amen, right? Amen. I, I remember the first time I heard that quote, at least the beginning of it, was in one of my favorite movies as a young girl, A Walk to Remember. When they get married, her dad reads that quote. And it is a, it is a very beautiful quote. It, it reminds me of something I also heard. I, I don't remember who said it or anything, but one of my friends posted on Facebook... And she was like, love is patient, love is kind, love is slowly losing your mind. <laughs> she, I don't think she's completely wrong. As anyone who's been in love, you you do lose your mind a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. This quote, I love this quote so much that um, I went to uh, Shady Maples, uh, Smorgasbord, that's in Lancaster. It is mm -hmm. the best smorgasbord, all-you-can-eat buffet type of place that you can go to in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. If you've never been there, if you like the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch country, go there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Lady Maples has a huge gift shop down in the basement, and I saw a framed, a beautiful framed uh, 
picture of this quote. I'm like, that's mine. Yes. I, I need to have to have it. So I bought it, and it's been hanging up ever since. So I have it in the living room right, uh, right next to the front door. So I love it. I need to find something with my quote framed. Jeez. Maybe I need to paint it. Who knows? <laughs> hey, go for it. Why not? Yeah. I think we're on the next question, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the single most important piece of writing advice that you have ever either, like, read or received? Ooh, another good one. Um, okay, so I don't exactly know where I read this online. I was looking up online for good quotes one day for inspirational quotes because I just needed a little, you know, a little motivation. Oh, um, I saw this one quote and now I can't find it anywhere. Like, mm -hmm. I tried to relook it up to see who came up with it and I cannot find it. Um, but the quote goes, write with a passion as if there was no tomorrow. Like, that struck a chord with me, seriously. Mm -hmm. Talk about deep, yeah. All right. So, what about you? Um... I would have to say it was in ninth grade. I had the most amazing English teacher. I wish I could remember her name. Uh, she saw me writing in those those books, and she would let me use them as like homework sometimes because I had traveled in so many different schools that I'd basically gone through the lesson plans that they had already laid out. So it'd be like no problem. I'd get the homework done instantly and like all the others were working on it for like weeks. So she'd be like, okay, we'll write like a six page creative story or she'd give me a topic to write on. She'd like turn this in by, you know, Friday or something. And so I would sometimes just create a new one or give her one of my notebooks and say, here you go. Yeah, here's my homework. And she told me, like, she read them and she loved them. She said, never let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Don't let them get in your head. Don't let them tell you you don't have what it takes because you do. She said, you have a very bright future if you can stick with this. And unfortunately, because of toxic relationships, I kind of was forced into believing that I sucked and that I didn't have what it took. Um... But I think within the past year or two, uh, especially getting to read your things and having you in my life, it's helped me kind of reawaken and realize, like, I do have this. I do have what it takes to get my butt back on it and just create what I love. So thank you very much for that. Anytime, sunshine. I'm glad to help you in any way that I possibly can because you I've, I've seen a couple of your stuff especially with our writing prompts I love what you had to say like I really can't wait for everybody to start reading your stuff too so like I really can't wait you do have what it takes thank you, you really so can. much I'm your number one fan <laughs> yay I have one <laughs> alright so um well why are we here is the last question that we have today. But, uh, yep, why are we here? Well, we are here to dive deep into our favorite books with reviews. So, like, spoiler alerts. And we will give spoiler alerts in the introduction of the episode if we are going deep into different books and topics. Uh, we are going to be interviewing with guest authors and their latest books and projects. We are here to provide fellow writers with some tips for writing, staying motivated in order to keep their flow of ink going. We're even going to be reading some of our poetry and sneak peeks of our own novels and stories, which I am excited about, especially with, you know, all that you have coming out. I think that this is just going to be a great fun thing for us as well as the listeners. Absolutely. I am so excited for all, I mean, every single one of our future episodes. Yes. And um, if any of you listeners out there really like what we've had to say so far and you're interested in following us on our journey, 
please do hit the subscribe button, follow us on our Facebook page, and even on my Jenga Pierce page, I will uh, regularly be posting the events to our podcast, so that shouldn't be a problem. We'll have all the updated uh, all the up-to-date information, and um, we're really very excited to be with you on this journey. And um, one last thing that I would like to say before we get to the closing of this is that um, if you have any suggestions for books that you think would be good for us to uh, do a thorough book review for that you would like us to check out, feel free to put that in and uh, as a suggestion and. We'll take it. We'll, yeah. we'll check it out. We'll add it to our list. We we have a list, and please feel free to do uh, any book suggestions or, you know, poetry even, I guess, that can be included. Uh, we are super excited for to be interacting with you guys. And every Wednesday, so you'll see this Wednesday... We will be posting a new episode. It will be weekly if we get to the point where we can. I think we'd even be up to twice a week. We will see how it goes. I think we've discussed that a little bit. Um, and just super excited. It's like everything. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thanks all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's conversation at The Flow of Ink. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we hope you join us for next week's episode where we will discover Shiver, a book written by Maggie Stevader. Steve Vader. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. Uh, and we will be spoiling a lot of things. So, super excited to be doing the episode on that. Absolutely. And if you have any questions for us, please drop a comment below. And we'll address it in our Q&A portion at the beginning of next week's episode. We promise we won't bite. At least not that hard. <laughs> also, do not forget to hit that bell icon and subscribe to our channel so you get notified for every episode we post. Again, thank you for joining us here at The Flow of Ink, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Ciao for now. Ciao.